Hello everyone and welcome to round 9 of the 2021 uh, Tata Steel Chess Tournament in a game between Magnus Carlsen and Nils Grandelius. Nils who was leading the tournament uh, for the for the first part of the tournament but uh, then he lost a few games uh, but he has a very colorful tournament. He already has 3 wins and 2, draw, uh, two losses to Anish Giri uh, and uh, Hari Krishna but... Um, uh, now he faces world champion Magnus Carlsen, and Magnus suffered his first defeat in the previous round. Uh, we checked out that game; it was uh, it was quite a beauty. If you haven't seen it, I will put it in the description below. So check it out, as it's um, uh, just uh, just awesome. Uh, and now it's uh, interesting to see what Magnus will choose with the white pieces to try and get back into this tournament, uh, as he now most definitely needs a win. He won only the first game. Uh, he played against Alireza in the tournament, and then uh, had a series of draws before losing. Uh, in, in the previous round so uh, without further ado let's check out what happens here as this game uh, we have a lot to cover so Magnus with the white pieces opens with e4 and Niels opts for c5 so again uh, we'll see if we will again have the Nidorf on the board and can the Nidorf uh, even survive one game in this tournament so knight uh, that's not a knight knight to f3 d6 and d4 uh, striking in the center, captures, captures, knight to f6, knight to c3, and a6. Again, uh, the knight of Sicilian is on the board, and uh, let's see what Magnus chooses here. So, whenever we uh, show a game that was played in the knight of, I often mention that bishop e3, bishop g5, bishop e2, bishop c4 are the absolute top... Uh, Top, uh, top four moves that uh, you play in this position, but there are plenty of other moves. You can play h3, h4, you can play f3, you can play uh, even g4, you can play a3, you can play a4. So a lot of moves are possible here, but Magnus goes for an extremely rare queen to d3. And this is uh, so rare that uh, it, it Niels really started thinking in this position because this is something you don't encounter quite often. And uh, I remember when I was thinking about the, what uh, what you could use against the Knight of if you if you were playing against someone who plays the Knight of uh, Queen to D3 does not come up uh, all that often. So here uh, Magnus wants to surprise Niels with this, and let's see what's the idea behind Queen to D3, because for the moment it it looks like it's just blocking that Bishop on F1. So let's see what was. Um, uh, Carlson's idea. Uh, Niels continues with e6, which is a standard move uh, in this setup. Uh, very nicely done. Uh, we have a4 by Magnus, stopping Black's expansion here on the queen side. Knight to c6, and here Magnus trades. We have knight captures, b captures. Black now gets a, a massive pawn chain here in the center, and now queen to g3. And this is the idea behind queen to d3. Shift to the queen over to g3, where you still have pressure on the d6 pawn, but also you are preventing Black from cap uh, from developing the dark square bishop. Uh, and here there is one game in the database, uh, a top level game between Grigori Oparin and Boris Gelfand, where d5 was played. Uh, the game ended in a draw. It was a blitz game in 2017, played in Zurich. Uh, but here we have bishop to b7, and it is as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Carlsen deals with bishop to, to b7. Uh, also, a very interesting here is h5. Uh, I'm just going to show it because it's, it is interesting. It threatens h4, and it does appear to be uh, the top idea uh, against this queen to g3 line. Of course, white will play h4, and now bishop to e7, and black continues uh, development and castles next because the g7 pawn uh, is not something you want to grab. If you grab this rook to g8, queen h6, and now d5, and it's uh, black who who will have a uh, you know a, a very pleasant game. He has the semi-open G file for the rook. He has this massive center, uh, and it's very easy for him to bring uh, the pieces into the game. Uh, I'm just going to show one funny line: E5, rook to B uh, B6 kicks away the queen, queen F4, and now rook to G4. Again, chases away the queen, and after the queen moves, now you shift the knight from F6 as it's under attack. Captures, captures with check, and now King D1. And this is uh, complete madness on the board, so who knows what uh, what's happening here. So, okay, that's that's uh, kind of the idea behind h5. But Niels went for bishop to b7, and now Magnus continues developing. Bishop to e2, and you'll see how, how nicely the, this bishop is placed on e2. We have bishop to e7, now offering the g7 pawn, uh, but now, now, of course, you don't capture it. If queen captures again, rook to g8, and we get a fairly similar position with the, this bishop already developed on b7. So Magnus ignores that and plays bishop to f4. Now saying, uh, I'm preparing to push e5. And if you want to stop that, you have to play e5 yourself. Point is, if uh, uh, Niels just castles and allows this e5 move, it's, uh, it's a very dangerous idea. Because white will have this pressure here constantly on the g7 pawn. And not a lot black can do about that. 
So instead, after bishop to f4, Niels blocks it with e5, Magnus goes back, bishop to e3, and now Niels castles. And here, situation on the clock is, Magnus says an hour and 20 minutes on the clock, so he, he wasted very little time here, whereas Niels is uh, below one hour clock, um, a point as he's on fi some 58 minutes. Uh, and here we have castles by Magnus. He also decides to castle king side, and now uh, king to h8. Uh, king to h8, you want to, uh, well, you want to free the, the king away from this diagonal, uh, as at some point you want to move this knight, you want to push the f5 pawn, so king to h8 definitely makes sense. And you don't want to have your king on g8 uh, uh, constantly worrying about moves like bishop to h6, that will, uh, of course, uh, attack your pinned pawn. So king to h8. And for this king to h8 move, uh, Neil spent some 20 minutes, so that's, uh, you know, he's burning time like crazy here. Uh, we have a5 by Magnus, grabbing more space on the queen side. Now ideas like bishop to b6 become possible, knight can come to a4 and then to b6. So again, uh, a little bit more for Niels to worry about. But Niels sticks to his plan. He goes knight to d7, prepares this f5 thrust, uh, and here uh, Magnus brings more firepower to the d file. Uh, rook f to d1, and now uh, we have f5 by Niels. And this is a this is a wonderful idea uh, because Magnus captured it and Niels just played d5. So he uh, temporary pawn sacrifice to uh, increase his activity in the center. Uh, because if you go after this pawn, then white has all sorts of tricky ideas like queen to h3. Now attacks this, puts pressure on h7. If you move the rook bishop to, 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 to c4, attacks the rook here and now it's... Uh, it's a crazy position where if black decides to go d5, you can even give up a piece here. Captures, captures, bishop captures, bishop captures, rook captures, and now there's a double attack on the knight, and there's no way to defend this. If bishop to f8, you defend it like this, just rook a to d1, and that's just it. No, no more options here. Uh, the knight is attacked three times, and even uh, this is covered by the bishop, so you cannot defend against this. So you'd have to move the queen, but then just captures. And uh, white is uh, white is having a, an, uh, an amazing position. If queen captures on c2, going after the rook here, you just kick the queen away. Queen back, uh, rook back to d2, kicks the queen away, and you enjoy a, a better position. So instead, after e captures on f5, we have this d5 move by Niels, also with ideas of pushing d4. And here Magnus also went into a uh, thing, and uh, he played knight to a4, which is... Uh, which has been an idea from the start, you want to get the knight over to b6, but I'm just going to show just for fun, because I know you guys enjoy it so much, uh, a funny line that starts with queen to h3. Uh, here again, you're uh, you're again having a lot of pressure uh, to, uh, on the knight, on the h7 pawn, and also you are inviting black to play d4, but if black goes for this d4 idea, you're going to play bishop to c1, and now uh, the knight is off limits. Black needs to figure out w w what uh, black will play, uh, because if you capture the knight, then just f6 and white wins. So, uh, simple as that, because now there's a double attack here. Uh, the bishop is under attack, and even with the with the best reply, let's say captures, bishop captures, and now uh, bishop to c8, you just move the bishop to add another defender to the knight, captures, captures, and now let's say queen to g3, and it's an uh, um, amazing position for white. Uh, this bishop is a monster, the, the rooks are very nicely placed, the other rook can come into the game very easily, and it's uh, uh, a beautiful position for white, like I said. Uh, but okay, uh, instead of that, after d5, Magnus went for knight to a4, he wants to place this knight over on b6, uh, and now comes, uh, well, uh, d4. And what happens now? So the bishop is under attack, Magnus has to move it. We have d2 and now even c5. So opening up the light square diagonal and uh, preparing to, 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 to bring the rest of the pieces into the game. Uh, the f5 pawn still under attack, Magnus plays queen to h3, defends the pawn and again puts some pressure here. Maybe he can bring some of the attackers into the game. But now comes uh, bishop to g5, uh, challenging this uh, bishop here. And uh, well, if uh, Magnus trades, then um, Niels just gets his queen into the game. So here, after considering the position for, for a while, uh, Magnus decides to trade here. We have queen captures, and now rook to e1. Uh, and here, a situation on the clock is 28 minutes Magnus and 23 minute Niels. Uh, and, uh, it, well, it's uh, just a... Uh, 
just a very very tough position to to play the g2 pawn is under attack by the bishop and the queen the rook can come into the game rook can ca capture on f5 you can then double up rooks here and magnus really needs to decide how to play this so here magnus goes bishop uh sorry first Niels goes bishop to e4 uh, it just goes after this pawn says that this wasn't maybe the the best idea uh, and now magnus counters that with bishop to d3 so Niels picks up the pawn we have bishop captures and rook captures on f5 now uh, clearing the df8 square for the other rook uh, and now uh, knight to b6 asking do you want to uh, play play something weird like a rook to d8 or do you want to trade on b6 and then i will get a nice pass pawn so here Niels decides uh, to take on b6 we have knight captures on b6 a captures on b6 and now h6 just creating some breeding room for the king saying that this is not a problem uh, it's uh, at any point i can just bring more attackers here eliminate this pass pawn it's not going to survive very long so here magnus plays queen to d3 now with a double attack on the a6 pawn and Niels says no problem i'm just going to play rook to b8 uh, if you're thinking about this uh, sort of a counter attack with rook to f8 it does seem like it's very nice but after rook to f1 uh there's not all that much for black to do you can go queen f6 to triple on the f file but just b7 now is very strong and now you cannot capture on f2 because of b8 queen and now whatever you play white will uh, definitely come out on top captures captures and there's nothing much for you to do queen captures here you're going to capture here and one of the queens remains on the board it's of course completely uh, winning for white so after this b7 move uh, you'd, ha you'd have to play something else you you'd have to play something like c4 uh, but uh, then after queen captures on c4 uh, now you can capture on f2 but it's a it's it's a really tricky line that uh, uh, in the end just for example captures on f2 you can bring a queen into the game uh, now uh, uh, re requires you to go for this uh, rook captures on g2 check king captures on g2 and now queen to g6 check and it's a very very uh, very crazy line uh, if king goes here queen to e4 with check and then it's just uh, just a force to draw so it, it is possible to go for something like this after rook a to f8 but Niels decides to go for rook to b6 just uh, blocking that pawn uh, Magnus grabs on a6 and now comes rook to f6 saying okay I'm now gonna pick up the b pawn and there's not much you can do about it point is if Magnus goes for something like queen to b5 to defend this pawn uh, then queen d2 is very annoying uh, this is threatened this is threatened this is threatened and you now have to go back and then after a queen trade you just pick off the the pawn and it's a, a a completely equal position so instead after rook to f6 magnus goes g3 he prepares a very sneaky line after the pawn is captured uh we have rook f captures on b6 rook captures rook captures and now f4 and this is uh of what magnus had in mind when he played this g3 move uh but uh, the problem for Niels is that Niels is very low on time here uh, but you're you know uh, comfortable at your own home so feel free to pause the video and try to find the only good move for Niels here uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the move. We already saw the move once in this game uh, for for similar reasons. Uh, so prepare yourselves. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's C4. This is the only good move for white here. Point being that after the queen captures on C4, you can now capture on F4. And now uh, the point is the queen is no longer here guarding the h7 square. And now after this check is delivered, it's not checkmate. You can move the king. And now even after queen to g8 check, king to g6, uh, there is no good reply here. For example, rook e6 check, captures, captures with check. And black can just play queen f6. Amazingly, this is a draw. Captures, captures, a g captures on f4, king here. And now b4, but after king captures, you can see that king is well within the square of the pawn. Uh, it's not a problem for the black king to reach this pass pawn and then black will start pushing his pawns in the end it's going to be a draw uh, but uh, this was in the position for Niels after this f4 move so extremely hard to find especially with such little time so little time on the clock so Niels went back with the queen but this means that magnus will now win a pawn so here rook captures on e5 rook captures on b2 and now rook captures on c5 now magnus is up a pawn and he will of course try ideas like queen f5 go after this uh, position from the thumbnail maybe win the queen maybe end the game quickly uh, so here queen to a8 uh, with some ideas of rook b1 check maybe you can do something with this setup uh, but magnus goes for the absolute 
absolute best king to f2 not allowing anything to come with check and you don't really have uh, all that many great options here uh, and here uh, the um, Carlson has some eight minutes on the clock and Niels has some 55 seconds so here we have rook back to b8 not allowing uh, any any uh, tricks along the back rank and now queen to f3 now Magnus offers a queen trade and you cannot go into this uh, uh, rook and pawn uh, and king endgame because the black king is just too far away so here queen to a7 and now queen to d5 by Magnus saying that okay uh, now I might even win uh, another pawn and it's going to be very hard for you to play this now there was this sneaky d3 in the position uh, it kind of makes uh, things tough for white because after c captures you've opened up this diagonal you can now go queen b6 uh, threaten ideas like this but uh, white is still up two pawns so black will have a very very difficult time uh, defending this but it, it was possible however after queen d5 we have queen to a1 by Niels uh, and now Magnus finds queen to e5 puts pressure on the rook here and prepares uh, some uh, very nasty stuff with the rook along the sixth and seventh rank so here queen to b2 defending the rook now rook c6 threatening to capture the pawn here uh, because the g pawn is pinned so king h7 Niels of course defends against this now rook to c7 threatening checkmate so rook to g8 and now finally Magnus decides to uh, bring the king somewhat uh, somewhat closer to safety with king to g2 uh, if you uh, if Magnus didn't want to played too safe for example f5 f f6 is in the position but he wants to uh, get his king to safety he had too many draws and he even lost the game in the previous round to mess this one up so he wants to play this one uh, by the book so here uh, we have queen to b4 uh, and now comes queen to e4 check king to h8 and the rook to d7 this is what magnus goes for he says everything is nicely defended uh sorry <laughs> uh, i'm now going to win this pawn and then i'm just going to be up two pawns and you don't really have an active move here but he will have to calculate some of the checks after queen to d2 and this is exactly what Niels goes for queen to d2 check king h3 and queen to d1 now preparing to maybe uh, do some sneaky attacks from uh, from from behind uh, but here Magnus just plays uh, rook to e7 now it's very interesting Magnus goes rook to e7 with the idea of trading rooks but uh, uh, it's always dangerous to go for for a queen uh, queen endgame because those are the absolute hardest games to play uh, queen endgames being up a pawn it's like uh, you, you have to play it to perfection to actually uh, uh, make use of that ex extra pawn here magnus had the the very promising king to h4 but it requires too much calculation in 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 an already sort of a winning position uh, but i will show it because it's very interesting king h4 and now you're pretty much out of checks so you don't have to worry about queen to h5 anymore but you have to worry about the g5 check and now the point is after captures and captures you go back king to h3 your only move and now after queen f1 check king to g4 now you're gonna get queen to d1 check but now queen f3 and now you have to yeah you have to trade queens otherwise queen f6 check and it's game over so here you have to trade and now you have uh you have a winning end game for white even though you're just up one pawn i'm just going to show how easily winning it is for example rook c8 black wants to collect some pawns white says okay you're welcome to collect those pawns and if you collect those pawns captures uh, rook captures king g6 uh, it's game over black is getting checkmated and that's it nothing uh, f for black to do here so king h4 very sneaky move it was in the position uh, magnus decides to go uh the longer route he wants to trade rooks and then play the 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 most hated end game uh there ever was the queen and uh, queen and pawn end game so here uh, we have queen to h5 check king to g2 and sorry king to g2 and now rook back to c8 putting pressure uh, along this c file so white has to be somewhat careful with the queen but now magnus b uh, as uh, he cannot trade anymore this is covered by the queen and by rook he goes f6 the idea of f5 the idea of course is f6 pawn captures and queen to h7 checkmate and Niels needs to find something to defend against this so he finds queen to d1 now threatening to pick up this pawn uh, but now Magnus goes for rook to e8 check uh, I'm just going to show what Niels had in mind if Magnus uh, continued with this f6 idea then uh, Magnus would lose the game because after rook captures on c2 with check king h3 uh, you have queen to h5 check and now the king cannot go back you have to block with the queen queen f5 check queen to g4 and now queen to f1 check pushing the king up the board king to h4 and now rook captures on h2 with check queen h3 and now this is just checkmate 
So uh, the position is not without poison, and Niels finds it with queen to d1. So Magnus decides to trade rooks here, uh, captures, captures, uh, and then now after uh, king to h7, Magnus goes queen to e4, now threatening f6 to come with check. So Niels goes back, a king to h8, and now Magnus could play this position in a in a few different ways. He could start with uh, with pushing of the pawn. He could start by improving the safety of the king. He decides to go for queen to e8 check. Uh, king to h7, queen to g6 with check. King to h8, of course not here because then f6 is just winning. Uh, you will not be able to capture. And now f6. But f6, uh, to calculate f6, you first have to see what happens after all the checks come uh, because the pawn will be captured. But it's not a problem. Queen e2 check, king to h3, and now queen to e6 with check. You could also go for queen to f1 check, but you can never capture this pawn with the queen uh, because the king and pawn endgame is winning for Magnus. So here, uh, queen to e6 with check, king to h4. Finally, the king finds his way all the way to h4. You can see that uh, indeed the king is very safe there. G captures and now queen captures with check. King g8 and now queen to g6 with check. Uh, king to f8 and now g4. Now Magnus slowly needs to improve the position of his uh, king and push the king up the board and push those pawns up the board. So queen to e5 and now comes h3 as the pawn was under attack. So king to e7 and now queen to f5. Again, uh, Niels cannot afford a queen trade. Queen to e3 was played and now uh, a very interesting position where uh, for the last time, pause the video and win this game for Magnus uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being a true uh, master of the end game. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's king to h5. This is what you have to do to win games. Sometimes you have to give your precious pawn up uh, to improve the position of the king and then go after the pawn. This is what Magnus played. Uh, we have queen captures on h3 with check. King to g6, and now there is no way to defend the pawn here. Uh, you could try queen to h4, but then just king to g7, and uh, black's black's position is just terrible. There's nothing for for the white for the black queen to do there. So instead, we have king to d6, and now comes king captures on the uh, on f6 the problem with queen captures with check is that you're giving too much activity to the black king and after king to c5 you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work a bit harder for your meal so here instead king captures was played saying that i'm not interested in this if this check comes king f7 and there are no more checks everything is covered so here Niels after king f6 uh, tried queen to e3 but now Magnus just goes to g5, and now uh, this pawn is marching all the way up the board. Queen to e7 check, luckily this square is available for Carlsen's king, so king g6. Queen to e8 with check, and now king to g7. We have queen to e7 with check, now king to g8, and it was in this position that Niels Grandelius resigned the game, and Magnus Carlsen gets his second win of the tournament, uh, because after one more check is delivered, you can block with the queen, and this block now comes with check, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. Captures, captures, and the passed pawn is winning. Uh, so really, really insane game. Uh, could have, and I'm not gonna say could have gone either way because Niels never had an actual shot in this game, but he did have chances to. Uh, to um, uh, play, play better moves, uh, but it's uh, that's one of the reasons, I guess, why this queen to d3 knight of line uh, is not played uh, at the absolute top level. But Magnus here makes it work, so you know, uh, whenever you play against the knight of, you could always give this queen d3, queen g3 maneuver a shot. I know I will, and we'll we'll see what happens. So you know. Uh, a very interesting line. I, I, I've checked in the opening uh, database. It's like the 15th most popular line, this queen to d3. But, you know, uh, modern engines are changing the way chess is played. So we're going to, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a resurfacing of, of, of all of these uh, never, never played old lines uh, now in maybe 2021 and especially uh, even after. Uh, but yeah, uh, after this move, uh, Niels resigned and a, a great victory for Magnus. So we're going to show some other games from round nine and then we're going to discuss the standings a bit. Uh, but that's it for this game.
so uh, ho hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kevin Amalkar Gillen, uh, Alex Francis, Julia Truches, Samuel Schmidt, and Samuel Nathan Bennett for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.